Hi, it's Casey, and I'm here today to talk to you about how to implement book clubs into your language arts classroom. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I start talking about how to actually implement book clubs, it's important to talk about what is the difference between a book club and different instructional reading contexts like guided reading or literature circles. While all of these are ways that you would teach reading in a small group to students in your classroom, they are all very different. So the first one, guided reading, that is going to be where you have students at similar ability of their reading levels grouped into specific books that you assign them, and you are going to be asking them in specific questions of lessons that you prepare. Literature circles are more student-led, where they are picking the books of their choice, you're putting them into four or five groups in the class, they're meeting with the teacher once per week and you're more of that observer role. They're bringing discussion points and discussing with the other students. And book clubs are more that next step. So um, now book clubs are where all of the groups are meeting at the same time in the classroom. So where literature circles, the teacher is meeting with one of the five groups each day of the week and observing that literature circle, hopping in when necessary. Book clubs are kind of all of that removed and the teacher is more circulating around the room as four or five book, group, book club groups are all meeting at the same time. So it is that least amount of support, which means that we want to be extremely prepared of how we implement this, especially with middle school kids, because as we know with middle school students, if they don't have that structure and support and those different experiences embedded prior to going on their own, it can get a little tricky. So I have some tips and tricks for you when you are implementing book clubs. The first one kind of goes with what I was saying here and it is to build up to book clubs. So on the screen is an example. So if you do reading units, across the year, this is just what you could do. So like your first reading unit, maybe you do something like reading strategy groups where students are meeting with you and in their small groups and you are doing the reading strategy with them each day, each group meets with you one day across the week. And then maybe in that next reading unit, you're doing some guided reading. The next one, some literature circles, going back to reading strategy groups, doing literature circles, and then you're saving till the end of the year, the book club. Um, you're only using that once you're really confident that students are doing a great job in literature circles and are ready to be independent in book clubs. So build up, tip number one. Tip number two is teach students how to write really engaging discussion points. So a format that I use with students to teach them how to write a really good sticky note is to start by always writing the page number on that sticky note and sticking it on the spot in the book where it goes, that double assurance, make sure we know where we're talking about in the book. So all students can turn to that page number when the, when the student brings up their discussion point. The next part is, what are you noticing about that part? Why did you stop and make a discussion point for that part? And the third part of a discussion point, which I think a lot of students forget, is to actually ask a discussion question. So you picked that spot for a reason. Why? What question do you want to ask and discuss with other students? So I have an example there from Touching Spirit Bear. And so this was, I have the page number there, page 133. And then I said in this spot, I noticed that Cole starts tearing up when he tells Edwin and Garvey they are the only people who ever cared and who ever cared about him. And then my discussion question is, why do you think Edwin and Garvey want to help Cole? Are they making the right decision to trust him? So you can see page number, what I noticed, and a discussion question, actually two questions that I would then want to ask my book club group. So we wanna teach and model this to students. Using your interactive read aloud text is a really great way to teach students how to write a discussion points. Like you can actually show model discussion points to students and have them talk about them and talk about was this a good discussion point, why or why not? My next tip, tip number three, is to model the book club format. So once again, you're not going to be there as the teacher to walk groups through exactly how they're meeting. So you want to give them a format that they can follow and go over that with them ahead of time so they know how to structure the time that they have in their book club. An example format that I gave to my students 
the very first thing that they would do when they get into their book club groups is each group member shares the page that they're on and how many discussion points they brought to the discussion. It's kind of an accountability measure. It gives everybody a chance to talk and just kind of share how prepared they are for the discussion. The next step I have students do is to give a speedy summary. So they share their main events from each chapter or section of the book in chronological order. So this gets the summarizing out of the way. I know in a lot of small group discussions, students kind of get stuck into that summarize, 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 and don't dive deeper. So that speedy summary is there to center everybody on, okay, this is what happened in the text today. Now let's talk about it. The green at number three, use sticky note discussion points to facilitate a conversation, use hand signals. So in literature circles, I teach my students to do a thumbs up on the table in front of them when they have a new discussion point to bring up and two fingers on the table um, when they want to add on to a new discussion point. And we always go around to students that want to add on versus a new discussion point. So before we move on, it really encourages students to um, discuss the discussion points being brought up versus just bringing up new discussion point after new discussion point after new discussion point. So students are familiar with those hand signals from literature circles, and then they're able to bring those into book club. This is the majority of the book club discussion is the bringing up of discussion points and talking about them. If students have extra time, they get through everyone's discussion points. I use an if we have extra time discussion questions anchor chart that I'll share with you in a second here. And then at the end of every book club um, meeting, I would have students reflect on what went well, what can we do bit better for next time and complete the self and peer evaluation for book clubs, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a second as well. So my next suggestion is to make book club expectations extremely clear. This is an anchor chart that I constructed with students about what those expectations would be. So just an example, read to the agreed upon page. If you read over, don't give any spoilers, be prepared. So I have students bring five sticky note discussions to class and make sure that they've read the required amount of reading for that meeting. Use the hand signals like we talked about, keep the conversation balanced. So teaching students how to um, politely ask a student that doesn't is not um, contributing as much to contribute. And also if there's one student that's overpowering the conversation to really think about that balance. And then also in the red there, keep the conversation focused on the book. That's why I love to have the page number on the sticky note discussion points because it really encourages students to turn to that page so that all students are centered in the text and that conversation is surrounding the text and not going off on tangents. So those are a few examples of book club expectations. These are something that are established and talked about before the first book club meeting, but also before every book club meeting that is had. So like the second, the third, the fourth book club meeting, like we'd bring these up every single time. Tip five is to give students discussion questions for extra time. So it is inevitable that there will be some groups that go really fast and then are kind of sitting there awkwardly looking at you like, uh, we're done, what should we do now? And that this is kind of that safety net so that they don't take other groups off task or encourage other groups to get done fast as well. So this is just an example of an anchor chart that I had in my room this year of some questions that students can look up and grab one of those and then discuss as a group if they do have that extra time. Ideally, they wouldn't ever have to use this, but it, like I said, it's there as a really good safety net. So just a few questions like, um, how has the main character changed since the beginning of the book? What is a part in this section of the reading that surprised you? And these could be any types of questions that you think students would be engaged in talking about. Then my last tip that I have for you is to have students self-evaluate and peer evaluate every time that they do a book club meeting. You are not going to be there as an observer. A lot of times I do a rubric where I give students a speaking and listening grade when they meet in literature circles and guided reading, but I do not feel comfortable giving that grade um, when I am more circulating between many groups and conversations. I don't know exactly what is being said because I'm more getting little snippets. 
Um, so I created this uh, evaluation called Self and Peer Evaluation for Survival Stories Book Clubs. And what students do is they write their name in the first column and they write the names of the other students in their group across. And they give a three, two, one, or zero. Three means meeting expectations. Zero is does not meet expectations for the different criteria listed, such as reads to the agree upon, agreed upon page number, um, through discussion contribution, shows a strong understanding of what is happening in the book, comes with five sticky note discussions for this section of reading. So there's all the different criteria and then students evaluate themselves and then they also evaluate their peers. So when I look these over, I, I organize them by students in the same group and then I'm able to kind of quickly go through and see who self and peer evaluations line up well and get a really good idea of how things are going. Sometimes students write me little notes and things like that. I also have students always go back to their own private area in the classroom to fill these out. They're not filling these out like with their group members all in a circle together. Like it really is better to have them like go back to their seats, fill it out in private, stress that this is just a quick way to do a self and peer evaluation. It's not to share. And um, it's just a great way to sum it up and also show students that we're putting importance on this and that they have expectations and kind of reiterating what those expectations are. If you would like to read my full blog post about the information that I shared in this video, you can visit my blog, theliteracyeffect.com. And also within that blog post, which is titled How to Implement Book Clubs, you can download that self and peer evaluation that I just showed up on the screen right here. Um, so you can go ahead and download that for free. And that's linked right in that blog post of how to implement book clubs. So I hope you'll go take a look at theliteracyeffect.com. I also have a lot of other information on there about teaching ELA at the middle school level. And I hope you'll go check it out. And for those of you that are implementing book clubs this school year, I hope that it is a great experience and that one or more of these tips was helpful to you.